Good morning, gorgeous people. Uh, or one morning. It's 2.15. I swear I've been up for a while. Uh, good afternoon. <laughs> Facebook, what's up? It's Sunday at 2.15. It's so nice to check in with you guys on such a gorgeous, gorgeous day. Um, and I don't have too much time today, but I did want to talk about an issue that um, I feel like I see coming up more and more, especially with women, um, but really in general, and it's really about knowing what your intuition is telling you, knowing about how to listen to your intuition in the first place, and thirdly, about really knowing kind of if and when you need to follow it, right? <laughs> um, and so I think that the third part of that is the big question for today. Um, so as you kind of... Um, sign up or show up to the live stream just send me some hands and wave hello and then if you drop comments in the um, comment box I will do my best to answer them even either while I'm talking or if I'm in the middle of something um, then I'll then I'll try to get to them at the end so even if you're watching the replay uh, do me a favor and just drop a comment let me know that you're here let me know what's helpful what's confusing um, and hopefully we can start a dialogue um, but, you know, I wanted to talk to you guys about one of the major um, misconceptions that I see about intuition, right? Which is that if our intuition is right, um, we should really just know deep down all the answers, right? So, you know, for example, if you get the intuition that you should start a business or you get the intuition that you should date somebody or you should get the intuition um, or that you should just go say hello to this stranger randomly, right? And then, you know, what happens immediately is all of this stuff comes up in the moment of hesitation when we, when we hesitate, which is, but why? You don't know that stranger. Strangers are dangerous. Strangers are scary. Like, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, it, all of the doubts and the things of, hey, I don't have this whole thing figured out yet. So because the whole thing doesn't, uh, isn't figure outable or I don't have like a rational and logical strategy around it, then my intuition, that must not have been my intuition, that was just exhaustion or, um, or maybe it was intuition but it's like crazy and I'm not gonna listen to that, I don't have time for that kind of insecurity and not knowing and, and, and second guessing myself, right? But I think the really important thing for us to know is that we don't have to know the how. And in fact, more importantly, it's we can't know the how until we get off our butts and actually start doing the thing that our ish intuition has guided us into, right? Because the nature of intuition, and I believe it's, you know, intuition is kind of your higher self, your deepest self, your best self, living inside of you and telling you what's best for you, um, but that they are also telling you that you know what's best for you is going to come from you and you're only going to be able to proceed down that path if you're willing to trust yourself, right? So it, it part of following into your, your intuition is having the faith that I know that I don't have all the answers right now as to how or why this should go well or this will go well. But I trust intuitively and inherently that if this is coming from within in a really, really strong way, then the other answers, the how of it all, will emerge, right? Um, and it ta of course, it takes some, it's so scary, right? I remember like when I first met my, um, when I first met my, hu the, the man who's my husband today, I was, uh, salsa dancing and uh, like you know saw him and the first thing that came to my mind when I saw him across the room was um, you're gonna marry that man and it was like this terrible like terrible thought or an intuition like yeah he was a good-looking guy but he was like from a different culture seemed to be like schmoozing all of the girls there like didn't rub me the right way in a lot of ways <laughs> um, and yet there was that weird intuitive voice from within and like I remember you know I went out on a date with him or two and there was so much 
chemistry and so much between us and it was too much it was uh, m me being like you know whatever this is like I can't figure out how this would work in a logical world we're from two different countries we have very different like education perspectives on the world perspectives on gender roles like how would I ever be with this person in the longer term right like there was so so much just like that can't be a real thing, Caitlin. That's your body tricking you. You're hormonal. You must just be, you know, you're getting to that age where all girls are getting married. Maybe you're just like, your body and your mind is tricking you, right? That's what I convinced myself. And, and really, all of that was coming from an inability to just sit with and listen to the intuition, follow it, and then let the path create itself. Now fortunately that story has a relatively happy ending in the sense that several years later I reconnected uh, with the same man um, and we were able to start it up at a, at when I was in a very different place of listening to myself and knowing what I could create in my life. Um, but it was it was this this terrifying thing, right? And it happens to all of us. We we can't understand why our intuition is telling us something, so so we shut it down and we shut it up and we refuse to listen to it, right? And that becomes a huge problem, right? When we ultimately don't think that we can trust ourselves and like ourselves and believe in our own opinions and um, really just listen to whatever our bodies or minds are telling us, that feels terrible then we of course are always seeking that validation that rightness that we're doing a good job all that kind of stuff from people outside of us and that's exhausting because number one like people have a lot of shit to do they don't always have time to validate and affirm us and number two just because that's somebody else's truth that's somebody else's path that they would validate for themselves and for their journey that doesn't mean that it's right for you right so even if you get all the outer validation in the world you're still going to feel like something's missing if you refuse to listen to your own intuition, you know? And so, you know, fast forward, um, you know, a few years after the story I just told you about my husband and I, I remember, so I had to, I had been living in India for several years um, and when I first moved to India, um, I was working in kind of m like public health technology um, social work kind of stuff. So I was really working on how do we improve like health outcomes through um, expanding technology to rural parts of the country in really innovative ways. Um, and I was head of kind of social innovation and really enjoying the work that I was doing. Um, but the I had a, just a really terrible about four months of, of, the, uh, of an experience in India where um, the company that I was working for and, and working with and creating, um, we, we did really well. We grew um, a really successful business. We raised millions of dollars and kind of in that we brought in a team of people who had different values than, than I had. And so um, the moment that we started getting like investors, they wanted to start investing in creating products not for the poor in India anymore but for the wealthiest of Indians because that would bring us greater returns as a company and all that. And that just was not... Just, I knew so fundamentally that that was not the work I'm meant to do in the world. That's certainly not why I moved all the way over to India. So, um, so, so having my company kind of fall, this that I worked so hard to build over several years, just fall out of my hands and stop doing the work that I thought was so powerful and so important, broke my heart in a thousand pieces. Um, and that was a slow falling out you know and then there was some two or three instances within a few weeks of some really really bad sexual harassment um, experiences that I had while I was traveling for work um, and then there was just a few other like I got robbed like just like some really experiences and like by the way these things aren't typical in India India is an amazing country full of wonderful people of course there's danger like there is anywhere else in the world but like I was just having a really really hard time my last for, for a few months in India. And then, um, you know, my mom got sick, so I ran home to America and packed, left the business, left everything, and just came home. Um, and was just like, all right, well, now I gotta figure out what to do uh, with my life. Um, and I had this, like, um, amazing job offer from um, this African organization that was doing such like my dream job description in Africa um, it was so freaking cool and then I had some really cool offers in New York as well and yet like there was some freaking unignorable voice inside of me that was like go back 
go back, go back, like, go back to India. I'm like, why, like, why would I want to go back there, you know, I was like, sex, like, sexually harassed, I built a business that fell apart, there was like, all these other issues, like, I don't really even have a clear opportunity, I'm not even sure, like, where I would make money, or what I would be doing, or, I really didn't know, and then, you know, a friend reached out to me from India who was basically like, hey, I really need help um, growing this company that I just started and I know you don't know anything about, at the time, I didn't know anything about permaculture. Um, I know you don't know anything about permaculture, which is basically a really cool form of sustainable land design, but I'd love for you to just like come help me and like get my head around like how to run and build my business because she knew that I had a lot of experience and a successful track record in India doing that. So I was like, okay, like, you know, I'll just, I'll help consult for like a few weeks while I'm in the US, I'll help you set up some systems and blah, 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 blah. So we were doing that work. And in the process of that, I really started to understand and fall in love with permaculture and learn much, much more about it. Um, and then, you know, randomly, um, she she was she actually offered me like, hey, can can I pay you to come here full time and like do this for a year? Um, and again, like it was the lowest paying opportunity. It was bringing me back to a a country where I was feeling jaded and upset and unsettled. Um, and and yet, like there was some just deep voice from within that was go back, go back, go back. Um, and so I went back and I and I took the opportunity and. You know, it's, it's, I cannot explain in, uh, in words the way that working in permaculture for three years in India, in the second chapter of my Indian life, changed my entire life. Um, it was deeply, deeply rooted in really understanding soil, really understanding plants, really understanding ecosystems and how they work together. And within that, I learned so much about my own self. Within that, I connected to a sense of spirituality that was really grounded in Mother Nature that I had never had before, and it was, and and it it's opened up worlds and worlds and worlds of depth and love for me. Um, and yet, like, had I listened to any amount of logic, right, uh, I would never have taken that option to go back. Like, I just would never have taken that option to go back. And not just logic. Like, there was. You know, my sister thought I was like a batshit crazy person. She's like, you just came back, you were like bitching about your experience, you were so, you're so jaded, you're this and you're this, and now you're gonna go back? Like, can we really trust anything you're ever gonna say? And and that's what I got from a lot of people. Like, are, you know, I thought you were done with, like, I thought you were, you know, coming home, I thought you had a bad experience. Can we trust anything that you're gonna say that you wanna, you know, that you don't want to do that anymore, now all of a sudden you're doing it? And it was so hard for me to just be like, yeah, I'm going back, you know, and and I remember trying and feeling so out of my authenticity and out of my courage and out of my confidence and out of my skin and my body, like trying to like defend my decision on somebody else's terms, right? Like to try to explain to my sister who is an amazing human being, there's just super totally different values than I have, right? Like trying to explain to her why I would go back to India, like what was that calling? She. It, I can't explain it on her terms because her terms are so different than my terms, right? And neither person's terms are bad, they're just different. Um, and similarly, like trying to explain it to friends, trying to explain it to all these different people, and then, and, and then even trying to explain it to myself, right? Like, what is this, Caitlin? Why are you, why do you have to do this? But I think I had learned so much earlier in my life how painful it is when we stuff our intuition inside us because I know what it's like to when we don't listen to our own intuition have to chase like a motherfucker to get it from somebody else you know excuse my language but like hey will you approve what I'm doing will you tell me I'm doing the right thing and that just the the level of low confidence and the level of fear that that way of living leads me to show up from is unacceptable and so I kind of just made a decision at some point in my life that I was gonna trust myself now here's what I'm gonna trust and I think this is a really important distinction when we're talking about intuition right I am not talking about trusting the story I am but talking about trusting the instinct what's the difference so the story is the because so for example I need to go back to India there's lots of stories I'm coming up with in my head, right? Because, uh, you know, because that will help me grow in this professionally, or because there's somebody there I need to meet, or because I have to go and fix the problems that I left there, because of da, 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 da. 
bullshit. Like that's just your, again, your logical mind trying to be like, we really need a very bulletproof, logical, reasonable sound system. Otherwise this can't at all be possible, right? Um, or similarly, like you, you see somebody across the room and you just get a weird feeling in your stomach, like I should not talk to that person, right? And you, you're trying to come up with all the becauses because that person looks like they only care about like fashion and money and I'm not that kind of person or because don't believe the story because our minds are not capable of, of really bringing in and integrating all of the truths and potential truths that could become um, a part of that experience, right? You don't know if that person is actually worth talking to. You don't know anything about that person. You don't need to believe the story. What you need to believe is that your instinct right there in that moment is telling you that that person is not somebody that you should be talking to and that's what you need to listen to, right? You don't believe the story, you believe the instinct. The story is the logical mind or the ego, whatever you wanna call it, just trying to come up with some sense of some secure narrative that we can live in. But a lot of times, again, the whole point of talking about intuition is about learning to trust yourself even when you don't have all the answers. That is your superpower. Learning to trust yourself when you don't have all the answers, right? And it's so freaking hard. I mean, God knows, like starting my coaching practice, it was literally... Um, hey Cammy, yeah, the four agreements, exactly, yeah. Thank you so much, Cammy, for recommending that because um, that's an, that book, The Four Agreements, is an awesome way of kind of really, really getting back into that mentality of a whole of listening to and honoring your truths, right? Um, and so I think that, um, of course, I like totally forgot what I was just saying, but um, I think good inter uh, well, welcome interruptions are always there for a reason. So thank you, Cammy, for reminding me of that. And so again, like when I was gonna start my coaching business, there it was. I remember like, again, a friend handed me a book. I had no idea what I wanted to do. I knew that I wanted to be able to integrate a lot of the work that I was doing in natural wellness in India with a lot of the kind of therapy um, and, uh, and contemplative work that I'd been doing here in the US, but I didn't know how or what or with who or da 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 I definitely didn't think I was gonna start my own business or anything like that. And, and again, it was literally, and, and my, my life partner will tell you this, again, here I was being a permaculturist at that time, like I was out in nature with my hands in the soil, teaching about natural education, teaching about how nature impacts our bodies and spirit impacts our bodies and like working with a lot of that kind of stuff, but like I wasn't doing at all what I was doing now. And yet somebody gave me a book, I read it and at the end of the book, I literally just had this incredibly powerful thought of hey I should be I should start a coaching practice right and all I did was trust it and before I literally and and the way that you get yourself to trust your intuition the habit or the practice is not to hesitate right so it doesn't mean you have to jump in fully if it's something big like for example if you have a really really big idea of starting a business or breaking up with your boyfriend or whatever it doesn't mean you have to immediately run and go do that thing but it means to immediately take some action that's aligned with it right so for me starting my business was i was like really inspired to do that like i knew immediately that i wanted to start a coaching practice and so i immediately called my partner was like hey we need to start a website what's that going to look like immediately started writing the content and of course all of the questions came in how are you going to get customers what are you going to do who's going to believe you you don't even you're not even a licensed therapist anymore like all this all of this stuff in terms of why it's not possible and when i and again i got home and i told friends and family and they said that mar market is super saturated you haven't been here for like 10 years you don't have a network anymore anymore like just uh, you know what how are you gonna do it you know you don't like marketing yourself and networking like that's not your thing how are you ever gonna get an audience into this there were so much questions that if I had believed the story or if I had listened to the doubts of course I would have never done it but in, and 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 so I didn't go out and tell every single friend and family member I had in that second ham starting coaching practice it was like I listened and I didn't hesitate and I immediately started taking action and the more actions that I took that were aligned to that intuition the more the answers started opening up and that will happen for you too it's just about you saying I'm not gonna hesitate I'm gonna listen or if it's too much if it's too much to listen to it in any any way shape and form at least just acknowledge it say hey I wish 
hey intuition thanks for showing up thanks for telling me that I have a voice of my own that I can know my own truths that there's a lot of power within me that I don't need to look to other people thank you for showing up but at this moment I am feeling too scared too vulnerable too weak too whatever to listen and to honor to your truths and if you are honest about that with yourself then like that's at least that's okay too that doesn't like make your intuition think you know screw you I'm gonna disappear for a long time or screw you I'm gonna go make you sick because this energy has to go somewhere in your body right at least you're making peace with the intuition even if you can't always act on it right so I just want to kind of you know share that with you that it's not about knowing all of the answers which is what everybody thinks intuition is like oh if my intuition was right this would make sense or i would have all the answers or it wouldn't feel scary of course that's wrong of course that's wrong in fact those things are there for you to test how willing you are to believe in yourself and again it's scary to start of course we know that right but they're there to show you how willing you are and so you start small you start with okay here is this intuition I have what's one step I can take in this direction right what's one thing I can show or do to make it seem and make it clear that I am willing to believe in myself in this particular moment so that was what I really wanted to share with you guys today, that when it comes to intuition, of course it's not gonna be perfect, right? But you'll know it, and it'll come in any, any shape or form, right? Like a lot of times it comes in a bodily form, like the tight stomach or like a, t a, ch a tight chest, and you know, other people talk about like having visions or things like that. I'm not really a visual person, so I don't get that. A lot of times I get words or messages, you know? Um, a lot of times I, I definitely, personally, like feel a lot of stuff in my stomach and my gut that's telling me things. And other times it's like an outburst of emotion, you know? It's like if, something happens and all of a sudden I break down crying or I want to scream in anger rather than looking at that with shame or hey this is Caitlin being emotional I look and I listen and I say what do you want to tell me right now what is it that I need to know what is it that I need to listen to and if I approach whatever signs I have be it in my body or words or feelings with reverence as to what they're here to teach me what wisdom I have within myself that I'm, I'm, I'm starting to open up to in excess, then it becomes even more powerful. So I wanted to share that with you guys and like anything else, intuition is a muscle, right? So the more that you flex it, the more that you listen, the stronger that it gets, the louder that it gets. But of course the other side of that is also, it's much harder to ignore it. So. Anyway, I think that's all I wanted to say. If anybody is here and still watching and wants to ask any questions, I'm super happy to respond. Um, so go ahead and put those in, in now. And in the meantime, I wanted to tell you guys about this really cool, totally free um, online uh, course that I have and it's um, it's really about it's a 10-day challenge, it's an email challenge, and it's, a, it's about learning to trust your intuition and consequently feel a lot more confident, right? I think there's a, so much stuff out there in the world that's all about, you know, confidence comes from fake it till you make it and eventually, you know, like, just do the things that you're scared of and then you'll become confident. And of course there's some truth and wisdom to that. I don't, I don't deny that, but I also know that a real, real, real deep confidence comes from being able to trust and listen to your intuition, to hear it, and then to listen to it and then to follow it um, and to know your own truths and to live by them, right? That is where deep unstoppable confidence comes because that also ends up bringing in the kind of people into your life who um, have the same values as you um, and also people just respond to bold authenticity realness, etc. So um, if you guys want to get in on that course, uh, there's a link here in the, um, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere here, um, there's a link in the post here. Um, I'll put it in the comments too. So sign up and you'll just get an email from me every day for 10 days. And I think it starts tomorrow. So really sign up um, and you'll get an email from me every day for 10 days with a, a prompt and an action. Sometimes it'll be a meditation, whatever it'll be, a journaling prompt, etc., and a reflection to begin to come in and start to trust your own intuition. So 
All right, my friends, trust yourselves. You are beautiful and wise beyond all that you could possibly know or dream. Of course, it's all inside of you. All right, lots of love to you guys, and I'll see you very soon.